Are you looking for a way to play your electronic drums without bothering your downstairs neighbors? Stay tuned and I'll show you a drum riser that fixes that problem. Hey there, it's Mike. I'm here to talk to you today about a drum riser that will reduce vibration and noise from going through the floor. If you're like me and live on a condo or an apartment building on the second floor or an upper level and you have downstairs neighbors, you've probably had to be considerate about the amount of noise you make when playing your drum set. I want to apologize in advance. I don't have step-by-step -step videos per se, but I have photos documenting my process for creating this drum riser. I wasn't sure if this was actually going to work, so I didn't record as I went, but now that it has, I definitely want to share it with you all. My downstairs neighbor, when they moved in, before even introducing themselves, the first things they said to me were that I walked too loud, so I kind of knew we were going to be in for a bumpy ride, and I had to figure something out with my drum set. So I went to the hardware store, I bought some foam mat, which is like a half inch thick, and I thought that might help prevent vibrations from going through the floor. And I started playing my drum set, and within four minutes, Four minutes alone, I got a knock on the door. Uh, it was a noise complaint from my downstairs neighbor. I think she could hear the bass pedal and maybe some of the vibrations going through the stands of my drum set. So even though it was 2 p.m. in the afternoon, I decided to stop playing and start researching options to fix this problem. And that's what I'm gonna show you here today. So here's what worked for me. I did a little research and looked into YouTube and saw that there's some different drum risers that absorb some of the sound coming off of an electronic drum set. Some people say they work, some people say they don't. I'm a believer after making this version. I've been playing for about one month now. I've had no complaints versus getting a complaint within four minutes of playing the set. On the left there, I brought it out. It's the foam mat that I originally purchased. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, it's kind of puzzle pieces together and then I had that underneath the drum set originally and compared to the drum riser that I built using a few different supplies which I'm going to detail in just a second here. So here's just an overview of the drum riser. As you can see it's pretty neat and clean. The entire drum set fits on the riser as well as the throne. So I'm just going to show you the difference of, between vibration with the camera on the stand and the camera off the stand just to show you how much vibration is absorbed by this stand. I know it's not exactly scientific, but I think it will prove my point that this does absorb some vibration. And so first we'll start with the camera on the drum stand itself. I'm just gonna stop my feet, maybe hit the drum pedal a little bit here, the kick pedal. Now as you can see, the camera's moving a little bit. It's vibrating. If I step on the pedal here, you can see the camera's moving, and I'm going to play the uh, toms. You probably see some vibration on the camera. Now I'm going to take the camera off the stand and put it on the floor directly next to the stand. Oops, sorry about that. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I just want to see if the camera moves or not. And that'll just show you what vibration is being absorbed. Playing the kick pedal, hitting the toms. And I hope you could see the difference that the camera was not vibrating nearly as much off the stand versus on the stand. So as you can see here, as I step on it, the platform does have a little bit of give and cushion. I think this is necessary to absorb the sound, um, but it's still, still very sturdy. I have no problem walking on, on this at all, uh, sitting on it when I play. I don't feel like I'm gonna fall over or tip on my throne. So before we get into the how-to part of this project, I'll go over the materials I used. I used two layers of three-quarter inch MDF board. Uh, they came in four feet by eight foot sections, so I purchased two. If you don't have a saw at home, you can have the hardware store cut them to your specifications. Uh, I used 13 tennis balls, a rock wool insulation to layer in between the MDF boards and the tennis balls. I used large cable ties, 175 pound tensile strength, a two inch hole saw drill bit. I think I used a 5 8 inch drill bit as well for the zip ties. Uh, that's to keep both MDF boards together. I used standard carpet padding 
between the MDF board and the utility carpet. A roll of utility carpet. I purchased a length that would wrap completely around my platform. I didn't want to just have the top covered and have the sides all exposed. Fabric nails and a utility blade, scissors, a saw, drill, hammer, hand clamps, straight edge, measuring tape, and pencil if you have it. So step one, before you purchase anything or go and do anything, I would measure the overall layout of your drum set, including the throne. If you want to sit on your platform, I recommend doing this. I think it looks better that way. So set your drum set up the way that you normally would play it and then just measure the dimensions of it. Mine was four foot by six foot and that gave me some room to spare as well. Step two, purchase supplies. The MDF board is right where the plywood is. MDF board is just extremely dense and heavy. I think you need some weight to this platform to help absorb the, pla the uh, vibrations. After you get the MDF boards cut, I would clamp them together that way when you're drilling through the MDF board using your hole saw drill bit, you don't have to measure twice. Just makes it easier, save some time. So step five, tennis ball placement. This is gonna vary depending on the size of your platform. I use 13 tennis balls, like I said. Uh, you don't wanna overdo the amount of tennis balls as you want a little give to your platform for absorption purposes. Starting at each corner is where you wanna start. Um, I measured in about four inches from this edge and about four inches from this edge and that left me my first tennis ball. I did that on each corner, about four inches from each edge and wherever that intersects, that's where you're gonna wanna place your corner tennis balls. I then um, put a tennis ball in between each of the edges, directly in the middle. Same thing on this side and same thing up here and over here. So that'll give you your perimeter. Uh, the next thing I did was I found the exact middle. I found the exact middle of the platform. So I measured, actually I didn't measure this, I just drew a guideline from this corner to this corner. Sorry, I'm just freehanding this real quick. And same thing from this corner to this corner, that'll give you the, the middle of your platform. And that's where your middle tennis ball is going to be, about right there. And the next thing I did was drew another guideline from this tennis ball to this tennis ball. From this one to this one. Here to here. And here to here. And wherever you see an intersection, that's where I place the remainder of the tennis balls. So you got one here, one here, one here, and one here. And that's 15 tennis balls. Um, you don't really have to do a whole lot of measurements this way. And if you had clamped your MDF boards together already, then you don't have to worry about having to do this twice and everything should be in line. So now using your two inch hole saw drill bit, you're gonna drill out each one of these X X's that you placed on your MDF board. And then after you've done that through both layers of MDF board, take the 5 8 inch drill bit or half inch drill bit depending on the size of your zip ties. I would just go around the perimeter and you know drill a few holes just to keep it together. You don't want your tennis balls flying around. There's no real science to this. I think I overdid it when I did mine. I'll show you a picture, but. And then you wanna drill all the way through both layers. And that's all the drilling you have to do. I recommend doing this outside as the MDF board is very dense. When you're drilling, it's gonna create a lot of smoke because of the composition of the MDF board. It's just gonna create a lot of heat and friction. So next you wanna open up your rock wool insulation. You're gonna have to peel back some of the layers to get it to the proper thickness. If you try and use it at full thickness using this design, I think the foam will be too much and your boards will not sit on the tennis balls, but instead will fully compress the insulation. So peel back the insulation to the proper thickness. You want it to be just above the tennis balls so that when you put the top layer MDF board on top of everything, the foam will compress slightly 
and then the boards will rest on the tennis balls primarily. The foam is there as just an added layer of absorption. So now that you have your tennis balls and insulation in place resting on the bottom layer of your MDF board, you want to place the top layer of the MDF on top of the tennis balls and insulation. It should compress slightly onto the insulation. Now wherever you drilled the smaller holes around the perimeter of your platform, you'll want to insert cable ties through both the top and bottom layer of the platform and secure those together so that your platform will not just come apart. Um, I'd make them snug, but not too snug, so to speak, because you do want your platform to have a little bit of give, just enough so that the platform and tennis balls won't come out of place when moved. Next, you want to cut the carpet padding to fit the top of your platform. Mine was four foot by six foot, so I cut that and I put the carpet padding directly on top of the MDF board. Next, you want to wrap your utility carpet around the entire platform so that the edges are not showing. Make sure that you keep tension on top of the platform as you're laying the carpet so that it doesn't ripple or, or look like it's bulging in one area and not the other. You want it nice and clean and taut. So the first thing I did was put the carpet padding on top and then I started wrapping the utility carpet around to the sides. There was a lot of excess carpet around the edges, so I affixed the carpet to the side of my platform using the furniture nails or fabric nails. I didn't use a whole lot in this step because I was gonna primarily fix the carpet to the bottom of the platform. So once you get the carpet set on top, you're gonna wanna flip your platform over and affix the carpet the remaining carpet to the bottom of your platform. I would do the corners last as that's where it's gonna be kind of messy and you're gonna have to cut a little fabric so that it wraps properly and looks neat and clean. So I hope this video was somewhat helpful for you guys. I'm sorry I don't have step-by-step -step videos of how to make this platform, but I wasn't sure if this was actually gonna work so I didn't actually record as I went. But now that it has worked for me, like I said, I've been playing for four weeks with no complaints at all versus four minutes with a complaint without this riser. I think it has worked. I know it's not scientific, but if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below in the comments or message me. Uh, thanks for watching and have fun.